is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Hallmark movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark movies. And I'm Kristen, and I act in Hallmark movies. Well, <laughs> one specific <laughs> Hallmark movie. And this, this is the Deck the Hallmark podcast. podcast. Sometimes I have to dance. Like, sometimes I'm just you so just pumped. Gotta go. I just got to get. You just got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And today's one of those days, pal. I mean. Isn't it? Listen, Kristen did the the, the Twitter uh, a service by telling them that she was going to talk with us. That's true. Already. And so we have been getting just inculcated with just questions of when Kristen's interview is coming out. So <laughs> Kristen What was Booth, that word? Uh, inculcated. That's a real, real it's word. It's a real word. I don't know. I promise. I'm not convinced. You're not. You Incl- think I made it inculcated? up? Inculcated? No, inculcated. And see, if I can't say it, it's not a real word. No, that that would be half of the English language okay. would be gone. He's the pre- professor, so yeah. I would listen to him. Well, professor, professor is, is, that's is a little a stretch, but we'll he take teaches it. high schoolers. <laughs> anyone? <laughs> I I taught middle schoolers, which is way harder. So uh, I'm the real uh, professor agreed. here. Agreed. Um, <laughs> we're so happy to have you on the show today. It's been um, only a few weeks since we started Sunday Delivered, but that doesn't mean that we're not like we don't have tons to talk about because we do. It's a very exciting day, Dan. I think it's going to be tough for Kristen because she's going she's used to doing these uh, with people that have probably seen the whole show. So there's a lot that we don't know, like that, that, that. What's Oliver's up. deal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's, he's a silly guy, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. No kidding. Um it's exciting though. Yeah, I, we're exciting. excited about this. Um, Fantastic! But you, excited you, to be here, boys. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's start from the beginning. Let's start. Uh, where were you born? Uh, what were you like as a child? And when did you uh, first uh, t- uh, tickle tickle the idea of? <laughs> you want to try again? You want to start from the top? There so, like, there's an the I- idea, and you're like, well, let's tickle this. I'm like tickling let's, it. Let's tickle well, this idea. I was an asshole as a child. <laughs> Start there. Um, <laughs> Were you like an only child, like spoiled, or just like just natural a hole? No, it's just an a hole. I think yeah. you know, just because I I really like to perform and I was loud, and now I have a child like me, and mm. I want to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> How old is she? I don't really. Know. She's uh, she'll be ten this coming month in oh, wow. February. Okay. Um. Anyway, I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Oh, we know it well. Oh, You're a big Kitchener that, fan, aren't you? Uh, I have all the shirts. <laughs> yep. Kit- I'm we- sure. I'm sure you've been to the big celebration in uh, in October. Oh it's yeah, the German Oktoberfest. Uh, Oktoberfest. You know, it's famous famous for Oktoberfest. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, later I've been to one province in all of Canada. It is Ontario, but it was just Kingston, Ontario. So mm. how close is Kitchener from Kingston, which is pretty much America, Kingston, Ontario is? Well, I live in Toronto most of my time. Uh, it's my home base. And so from Toronto, Kingston is about uh, three hours, I guess. And okay. then, and then uh, Kitchener is about an hour and a half from here. So. You do the math. Canada okay. can't. I just, for some reason, I can't. It's either an hour and a half to three hours away, or it's like 25 yeah. hours away. Like but in my just, mind, no, it's just all it's here. Just, Canada, just, in my mind, Canada somehow. Barren it wasteland is, of nothing. You can't even live there. It's and then the it's same like these big like, cities. Yeah, it's the same width <laughs> as America, but everything is just right here. That's kind of how I imagine <laughs> Canada. This it's like, we got how, all this, but it's right here. This is how it, why every Canadian thinks that we're just selfish people. Well, it's like, well, all of Canada is, Canada is just in like one little circle, right? Like, that's all that there is to it. Um, did you never go to L.A. and like make your home base L.A.? You've always been in Toronto? I did. I No, I did make my home base L.A. for uh, quite a while. Well, not, not quite a while, actually. A couple years on and off. The thing about Canadians moving to L.A. Is, as actors is, when you move to LA, suddenly everyone here in Canada goes, "Oh, she she must be good, eh? She's important, eh?" So they start casting you and everything here. So when I lived in LA, I actually hardly spent any time there. I was always working here, oh, uh, and then I decided um, to leave LA in I think in 2003. My my nana, who is probably one of the most important people in my my life, 
uh, she was dying of ovarian cancer. And I, I decided I need to be with her. Wow. And, um, so I was with her until she passed and, and then it was kind of like, you know what, my family, um, being close to family is more important. So fantastic. um, I made that choice. Yeah. So you're growing up, you're, you're You're a a rotten I'm an a-hole. kid who is in Kitchener, Ontario. And <laughs> like how, like I get you like to perform, but what was your first official foray? Like, was it a school play? Was it a, what was it that was like, oh my God, goodness, I can get on a stage and do this in front of people. Oh my goodness. I was 12. I would say I, I did do a little thing, little things here and there, you know, in elementary school and nursery school. But when I really realized that this is what I wanted to do um, and that I could do this for a living was I was 12 and I auditioned for a chorus role in the uh, production of Annie at Huron Country Playhouse, which is like Grand Bend, which is, uh, I don't know, like two and a half hours. You got it. Grand Bend. Okay. West. Oh, yeah, anyway, no, I know. Uh, Summer Stock Theater. And um, I, I was working with adults and I, I, I was like, oh my God, like these people are here and they're getting paid. I got paid 50 bucks for the yeah. whole summer. Yeah, you did. Wow, that's big time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which covered no portion of the um, room and board that my parents had to pay so that I could do this job. But <laughs> God, they're so supportive. So anywho, uh, that's when I, I got the bug and was like, okay, I'm, and from that moment on, I, I wore blinders. I was like, I know what I'm doing. This is what I want to so do. Your parents clearly sounded like they were very supportive if they did that thing that you just said. Like, what mm-hmm. did they do and what, how, how were they just like, yeah, is, was it just like, hey, there's an audition 10 hours away, we'll take you? Like they were just all in on your future? Pretty much. I mean, I have to say I have pretty darn good parents. Um, I was in a children's choir. It was called the St. Mary's Children's Choir. And a bunch of the gals that were in the choir were auditioning. And I got, I got word of it and was like, I want to do that. And so that's how it happened. How, and yeah, how my old parents were, were like, whatever. 12. 12. 12. Yeah. 12. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's better. When I, my four year old says stuff, I'm like, that's dumb. Like, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but I guess when, when you're 12, there's a little bit more like, okay, well, maybe we should entertain this idea. So you're 12, you do the thing, you love it, you get the bug. Where do you kind of go from there? How do you kind of keep, uh, you know, growing in your acting abilities uh, as a teenager? Well, I was ready to quit school right then and yeah, there, but my parents yeah. wouldn't let me. Yeah, that checks um, out. In mm-hmm. fact, I got two roles that summer. I was offered two roles, the one in Annie and then one in Carousel. And they wouldn't. my parents wouldn't let me do the Carousel production because it went into the school year. And I was so angry. I didn't talk to them for <laughs> years. Um, do you ever bring it up to him still? <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, of course do you I remember do. remember Carousel? I'm like, Dude, I would be on the ER if you'd only let me do carousel. Yeah. Well, everything yeah. we said about them being great parents, we did like they're the worst. I can't like I, I can't believe they would. I be can that just too. imagine Kristen getting like a screen test for ER with like Clooney, and then at the end of it, they're like, "Now that's great, but uh, do you ever do carousel?" <laughs> And she's like, you know, my parents, I'm sitting there gap. like, we'll see you. Thanks. We'll They're be like, in touch. Yeah, next. <laughs> <laughs> you see a big gap on your resume. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, that's right. But so you didn't do carousel, but I imagine uh, other things started to come up and you were, you were still trying to do things. I, I acted in school plays throughout high school. Um, I did a little dabbling in community theater. And then uh, when I graduated, um, high school, I was looking at theater school. So I ended up going to Ryerson theater school. Okay. So at, you go to Ryerson theater school. What's the first thing you ever booked ever like booked legit booked, not in the play as a 12 year old. Mm-hmm. Like I'm an actor, I'm an adult, I'm getting a paycheck. Oh, okay. So, well, okay. Legit. Uh, this is tough. Cause I got, I get the first job I ever got. Now, in fact, I quit theater school early to take this job. Um, was a touring <laughs> children's touring company of um, the Robert Munch stories. So paper bag princess, Stephanie's ponytail. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Never heard and of And we drove around in a van for four months, four actors and our stage manager all over Ontario and Quebec here and would show up at like eight in the morning put the set up to ourselves, do the show for a bunch of screaming children, take the set down, put it back in the van and drive another four hours oh, to boy. the next place. 
stay in the comfort in and do it all again. For, <laughs> and I did that for four months. Oh my gosh. So that was my first legit paying job. My first uh, on screen job was for a show. Uh, it was like a docu drama type um uh, crime, true crime thing called Exhibit A, and I, <laughs> I played a woman who was raped and murdered. Oh, oh my gosh! Boy. Welcome yeah. to the business. That's right. Welcome to the business. Yeah, Very and my, right. my, my, my. They didn't tell me they 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 used my headshot when the show finally aired. They used my headshot in a newspaper clipping with the 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 headline oh, like no. raped and murdered and my parents just about lost their oh mind gosh. like and I didn't know so I couldn't warn them and they were like I don't think this business is right for you there it is that's go, right go back yeah. to the children's right. tour we were right mm -hmm. to say no to carousel um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no here, let me ask you this so when was the thing so this is the first thing you booked what's the thing that you booked that you went this I this is it I'm I'm going to do this for a career. You know, like every actor we talk to is like, I bartended for three years or I blah, 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 or whatever. Like almost everyone has that. And then they have something that was so solidified in their role that they were like, okay, I think I, think I can actually make a living doing this and be just an actor. Well, I would, I mean, once I booked that first gig on TV, I just, I kept booking. Um, Did you never ever bartend or wait tables or anything? Not, not wow. when I started acting professionally. I've never had another job. Wow! Wow! Unbelievable. Which, which is unbelievable. <laughs> and there have been years where <laughs> it was like white knuckling That's your right. bank account, you know, going, <laughs> "Is it gonna go uh, through?" But uh, I would say when I really felt like I was like, "Oh, okay, this is it." It was when I booked a movie feature film called Foolproof, and I starred alongside Ryan Reynolds. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'll do it. Who is sure. that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, he's, yeah. All, he's also from Kitchener. Um, oh, he's, a he's young, another Kitchener kid. <laughs> up and coming uh, talent, Ryan Reynolds. He's another Kitchener kid. That's right. Kitchener he's kid. Kitchener mm. kid. Uh, so Something in the water in Kitchener. That's yeah. right. So as you're kind of taking a lot of these these roles, was there? Uh, I imagine a lot of them were like TV shows, like one off stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Was there anything that was come like that you felt like this this is going to be the thing, and then like maybe it fell through, or a TV show that you thought was going to last longer than it did, or something like that. That was like I imagine that as an actor, it's just it's just it's just you you have to have thick skin. But was there something that you were like, if this was the this was the thing, this was the thing, but then it didn't quite happen. Oh God, so many of those I have to say, <laughs> unfortunately, um, one in particular that really sort of stung was I got cast in a movie I think it was called three to tango and it was Matthew Perry and Nev Campbell wow. and I was like the third I was gonna be like the third lead oh wow and then they wrote the character out <laughs> oh, oh no boy yeah they, they did a big rewrite and they were like um Hi, so <laughs> your character no longer exists in this world. <laughs> That's one so heck of a goodbye. rewrite. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. So that was a big one because that was that ended up. I don't know if it ended up doing what I thought it would do, but it was a big feature at the time because Nev and Matthew were pretty huge. I'm pretty yeah. sure you've um, also got Dylan moment. McDermott in that film and Oliver Platt as well. Like that's a <laughs> Yes. Good for you. I the, think you're right. The, the yes, call definitely sheet. Oliver Platt is in yeah. that. That's like my senior year of high school. Like I thought I knew all the movies then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. That is very like that would have like yeah, that's a big deal. There's no doubt about it. I mean it's not ER, but you know, it's a it's a big deal nonetheless. Um and then go ahead. there was another one. This is I'm sort of telling tales out of school, but what um <laughs> Uh, so I, so I auditioned for this movie with, um, Drew Barrymore starring Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon. And it was called fever, fever pitch. pitch. Fever yeah, pitch. Yeah. Red, yeah. Yeah. Red Sox. Well, that Jimmy yeah. Fallon, he's had a huge movie career. So <laughs> taxi in that one. Yeah. But, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, another, another horrible, like disappointing actor experience where you like, you're like, Oh, this is the real world. Um, I, it was a role to play Drew's assistant. It was a really significant part at the time. And I got a call from my agent being like, they love you. It was the Farrelly brothers. Yeah. 
Um, they were like, they love you. It's going to happen. Great. Awesome. We'll all get back in touch shortly with all the details. Um, and, um, turns out Drew was an executive producer on the movie and she thought I was too pretty. So oh my I didn't get the part. Gosh. <laughs> what? Here's the thing is, is that role is a big role in that film. I'm a huge yeah. New York Yankees fan. I've seen that movie uh, several times. And I there that she go. confides in that girl like all movie long. Like, is it's she a, pretty? Yeah. I don't rem remember <laughs> which. See, that's, that's, that's exactly what they that's want. That's why they didn't that's cast Kristen. That's right. Boy, yeah. I can, I just man, that is something. I that is wow, that's a story. We've heard some here, but, but that is But that's the business. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's the way it goes, right? And yeah. I learned that early on. But What's like, wild you is, go, is you can't go home at night and be like, God, I wish I wasn't so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do no, that, tough. right? What's wild <laughs> is Fallon's wife was Drew Barrymore's real assistant. Oh, if, shut up. I didn't, I didn't know, know if, that. Didn't know if, if memory serves me right. And I could Are just, you just be. just making stuff up right Could now? be. All right, good talk. <laughs> could Glad be. Did it. It's okay. If anybody gets mad, Kristen can say she was making that up. That's too. right. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Totally. That's exactly was there, totally. since we're just talking about the things that didn't go well for you, uh, was, is, there a, <laughs> is, there a, is there a memorably bad audition? Like, and I asked this. Oh, God. Like, I mean, just like it, cut, it, it but one that immediately, immediately <laughs> pops up that you literally finished your scene and we're like, dear Lord, what, it, what just happened? That was terrible. Yes, actually. Well, there's a lot of them, but what, <laughs> the one that I really, really, really remember, like, it's like, it still hurts, um, <laughs> was for, it was Vancouver. It wasn't even that long ago. So I was well into my career and this is a good lesson. Like it does never, it doesn't matter how long you're doing something. <laughs> so I, uh, I auditioned for a role of a doctor, like a surgeon in the good doctor, you know, that show, yeah. on one of the Fre Freddie Highmore. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And he's brilliant. Yes. Um, anyway, I auditioned for, a role of that, and I, I, I went in and I could not remember the lines to save my life. And I had to pretend like I was performing surgery. And I kept <laughs> looking, like I couldn't figure out like, why I couldn't figure out where to look like while I was, because if I was like this, right, the, the camera would have this and it would be ridiculous. So I, was, I kept looking up like almost into the sky and didn't know what I was saying. And so then I kept having to look down at the lines in my oh, hand and boy. it was awful. And I, and they were like, try it again, try it again. I'm like, okay, I'll try it again. I'm like, Ooh, you got this, you got this. And I tried it again. It was like worse. Oh. And then, uh, and then I was, they were like, okay, just one more time. Just try it one more time. And I just went, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to go. And that was like <laughs> the only time in my 20 some odd career where I was just like, I give up. Like, I got to go. <laughs> and then I just went and cried in my car for like an hour and a half. But this is, I mean, the good doctor's been the last three or four years, Kristen. Like you're, yeah, I know. you're established. No, I, you've been on, you've been in 10 movies on the Hallmark channel. You've worked for all kinds of people like there's no reason, and I'm not here to, to need to encourage anyone, but you couldn't have possibly needed to like go to the car and be like, I'm a failure. Like you, yeah, you screwed up oh, no, one role, but oh my gosh. Oh no, no, no. I am very hard on myself. Man, that's unbelievable. <laughs> like it'd be one thing if you had not had like a break of any kind, but like there's like, you know, probably a solid million people in the world that know you as something on TV. Like that is... <laughs> You, and also, at the end of the day, you can always take solace in the fact that you're too pretty. That's right. You could have just been like, <laughs> that, you know, like, like I can't not, do that. I can't be a doctor that knows words. I'm too, I'm pretty. too pretty. Listen, when I mess up at work, I can't do that. That's right. I go home and I'm ugly. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta take when you gotta take W's when you can find them. That's right. For sure. You're I'm right, too pretty. Right. I'm just saying that if a million people brand knew you as something on TV, yeah. I think you've crossed the threshold where you don't have to cry about a good doctor audition. In my opinion, it's no. just my opinion. But you know what? That's why no, you're you, who you are. You're and I, right. I'm who I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the story. I'm sorry that you cried afterwards. We we get some good ones with that question. Uh, that was a That's a good one. But sad at the same time. I never thought about how hard that is on TV when you're doing surgery because 
you have to show your face. Well, like that's part of. We have Michael acting. Rady, and I think it's just where people are like. We have Michael Rady on, who's done a lot of Hallmark movies, and he's been in Chicago Med, and he just I was like, give me a line or something, and he just listed off like. 10 of these words that I couldn't spell on a dare in a just like boom, boom, boom. And I just, you know, you do that for years. I don't know how you do it. Like even C CSI or, or any of those shows, like just where there's a lot of like medical jargon. I, I don't know. It seems like a lot to me. Um, well, even though you didn't book that one, you did book a lot of TV and a lot of movies. You, you've been in a little bit of everything, um, but you've also been in Aaron Sorkin. And so I have to ask you, you know, the, you, you were in the newsroom, correct? You weren't? It's mm -mm. okay. So, what's crazy is, is it says the newsroom on IMDb. And I watched the newsroom. Oh, oh, okay. So, sorry. I back, back up, back up, back up. Okay. Yes, I was in a show called The Newsroom. However, it's not that one. <laughs> it was not Aaron Sorkin. Okay. Because <laughs> I saw it and it's got the picture on IMDb of the Aaron Sorkin's The Newsroom. And for the oh. life of me, I've seen that entire show, and I did not remember you in it. And I was like, "Oh, it, oh, I was in it." No, no, I'm sorry. That, that's, I, yes, I was in it. Oh my goodness! No, they just had a lot of prosthetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't recognize. So me. you can either answer the question, "What was it like to do deal with that dialogue?" or "What was the actual newsroom show that you did?" <laughs> <laughs> Prior to the Aaron Sorkin newsroom, there was a show called The Newsroom here in um, produced and shot here in Canada by uh, kind of a, like a famous guy here, Ken Finkelman. And I think he did a little bit south of the border as well at one point. But uh, yeah, it was um, it was in a newsroom, but Aaron <laughs> Sorkin didn't make it. Didn't, Aaron didn't make the cut. He stole no. that he stole idea, it. and he then, did. He, and he, then he took it. it to the newsroom. Wow. Um, so let's get to, uh, now that Sorkin's out of the way, let's get to <laughs> Sign Sealed Delivered, which is Sorkin-esque. Uh, oh, yeah, very and, similar to Aaron Sorkin. And let's talk about it, because I'm intrigued, for, before we even, well, first, tell us how you booked that gig, well, and you it's said, interesting. Have you done anything else for Hallmark aside from Sign Sealed Delivered? I did one, one uh, movie, uh, prior to like literally like right before um signs heal because the producer that i worked with on that that's how i got um sort of tagged is that star Sealed spangled banners yes yeah well that sounds like yeah. something <laughs> <laughs> it's a great title <laughs> <laughs> when I auditioned for it, it was called Banner Fourth of July. They always change the title. Yeah, well. always. And then you're like, I wasn't in that. Oh wait, I was. <laughs> I was. Um, I was. So I was shooting that in in North Bay, which is like way north here in Ontario. And the producer of that was getting ready to produce Sign Seal Delivered, and he asked uh, if I would audition for Shane. And that's how Sign Sealed came into my sort of like world. And you get that script and did you, did it immediately fly off the page as this is something different than what I was expecting from Hallmark or were you anticipating, you know, what you got? When I first read the script, I have to admit, I was like, what is this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was a little bit confused. Um, but also intrigued and, and I knew I, I could tell the writing was really, really good. And I loved the character. Um, but I was also like, I don't understand what this show is. Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Is it, what is this? Um, and, uh, and then I read the script about four or five more times and, and sort of really started to see the subtleties and the nuances and the, the weaving of, you know, how Martha is able to um, s connect the the care the main four with the B story. So in that case, it was Kelly and um, Charlie. Charlie, I think Charlie, yeah. Um, and how the you know similar so there's similarities of what people are going through emotionally and and discovering about themselves. Uh, and as I I think as Martha as the show continued and as she got better and better and better at that. And, and, um, and I actually, you know, if someone were to say like, what's, what do you think is the, the weakest sign sealed? I would say it's the pilot. Like, I think that the pilot is great, but it does not do, if you were just to watch the pilot, it doesn't do the show justice. 
Wow. Yeah, the, so the the the, pa- the Charles, pilot as in the, the movie, the, the for like the first. That's so that's the ex, the old extended. But so the show was, is it? It was always supposed to be a, a show, and then it turned into movies? movies. Well, interestingly enough, it was. Uh, so it, they call it a backdoor pilot. So um, what our what our movie was, the first one, the one with Charlie and Kelly, that was called a backdoor pilot. So it was an MOW, which is movie of the week. Um, backdoor pilot. Uh, and basically they make the movie and it can stand as one right. and done, or if it does well and, and the network likes it and it does well, sort of like viewership wise, then they're like, Oh, we're going to make this into a series. So that's what happened. Um, we got picked up as a series and then the, the format became one hours instead of two. Right. Um, and I always felt well, we were shooting the one hours that we didn't have enough time. Yeah. Um, there was just so yeah. much crammed into what, you know, each script and things weren't able to breathe the yeah. same way. Yes. So, um, we shot 10 <clears throat> one hours. Then we got asked to shoot the Christmas movie, which is a, um, a two hour movie. Then we got canceled. That's wild. <laughs> it's so wild. Yeah. Um, and I think part of the reason was I think the one hours were not the best format for telling the storytelling. Mm. Um, and, I, and I know. And then the other part was that we aired. We were scheduled to air on Sundays instead of Saturdays. And we were competing against a show that aired in a different time slot on Saturdays. And Saturdays just had more viewers. So it was like, uh, when calls the heart or us and they chose when calls the heart. And then our fabulous producer, Joel Rice, who's the reason why I'm on the show. Um, uh, he had this idea, they were developing movies and mysteries and they were looking for movie wheels, which means like several films a year with a continuing storyline. And he proposed to, um, you know, the, the head honchos there at the time that sign sealed should become a movie reel. And that's what happened. So, and th- this is so fascinating to me because I, you know, when we started this podcast in 2018 and we had like a Twitter account, you'd see hashtag postables occasionally. And like a running bit of mine in 2018 was, I don't even know what a postable is. Like, I don't know what they are. And the first answer I got from Bran was, is that it's something to do with Postmates, the delivery service. And that was a serious answer that he gave me. And so then um, I find out Which that it's... Which I'm well, not completely convinced it's not. <laughs> and so <laughs> Postables like well this show and Postmates. They like both. Um, mm-hmm. no, I, and so then I find out it was a, it's, it's a series of movies. And then I find out there's a TV show. And so I asked to our, like, our double-decker community, like our Facebook community, hey, what's, what's going on here? And there were a variety of answers that sounded somewhat similar to that. But this sounds like the show was canceled with no... There was no plans to ever do anymore. So when you when it gets canceled, you think we did a year of this, that's all we're ever going to do. And now you've done 10 movies since then? More, I think. Wow. I think we've done 11. Oh my goodness. But then there yeah, was a, another long but another yeah. long gap from <clears throat> uh, what? End of end of uh, 18 maybe? Uh, 18, 18 to 21. Yeah. Because the yeah. last one was right before we started the podcast. Yes. And then the most recent one came and we were like, okay, this show is now. And we couldn't do the latest movie because we'd never seen the show. So we put it on and that's why we're doing it. We, uh, the, the fans that are our, you know, on our site were like, please just watch them all before you do that. And we were like, well, you know, and you know what? You know what really put it over the edge, Kristen? My parents, my, my parents who live in Columbia, South Carolina, their favorite thing is sign sealed delivered and they always yeah. tell me they always and i haven't me. told you this my dad pulled me aside who i i'm convinced <laughs> he does not know what i do for a living but he's but he said i was getting a haircut and i had nothing else to do so i pulled up back to hallmark and i was like you're doing sign sealed that's one of my favorite shows of all time I, i'm serious oh my God, and so you I made my dad uh, proud yeah. to be my dad again which is really <laughs> It's really nice. It's been a while. He's been embarrassed for a long yeah. time. Uh, no, I, my parents, they say that Sign Seal delivers the best thing on there. And they, they keep, they, they say that. So like this became a no brainer for us, but it is in my experience, I, I, I'm ready for the movies just because I, I feel like 
it does cram a lot in. And I just thought that was maybe a natural choice to go, these need to be movies. But apparently they just, did they cancel it because they can only have one? Or it seems like it's an expensive show by Hallmark standards. Like Martha, it, Will- it is. Martha Williamson, she's a known commodity. You know, you've got four, like could be, you know, you and you and Eric could probably be one on the call sheet, and then the Norman and Rita characters could be two on the call sheet. Like, there's a lot going on here. Um, it, yeah. So, was did you think that was part of the decision to, to cancel it? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think. Um, I think if we had, you know, incredible numbers at the time, they would have kept it going. They probably would have scaled back on the budget a little bit. But you got to remember, like, yeah, I mean, when you talk about how expensive the show was. We had, in that first 10 episodes, we had Carol Burnett, <laughs> Valerie Bertinelli. Valor, yeah, and Valerie Harper. We had Della Reese, Valerie Harper. We were supposed to have... We haven't um, gotten to Carol Burnett yet. I can't believe that's coming. <laughs> oh, my God. She's amazing. I mean, come um, on. Wow. No. like it, So we had some real heavy-hitting guest stars. So imagine what they cost. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Well, I mean, I just thought so, that about Valerie Harper and Della Reese. I didn't know we have Burton Ellie and, and uh, Carol Burnett on the way. That's crazy. Yeah. So we had some pretty hefty guest stars that come at a price. And then the show itself was, there was so much packed into it. And again, like, you, you know, it, those, those episodes do seem like they kind of don't have room to breathe because we shot so much that never made it onto the screen. Wow. Yeah, there just wasn't time, and so then it becomes like trying to piece together things, and and you're like left kind of going, wait a second, what? Oh, okay. Um, it was it was a lot, and our hours were insane. And you doing I it one a week? What one episode in a week? Um, it was like one 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 and a one and a half weeks, I think, or one five six seven mm. days. So like, uh, and I had a one and a half year old at the time and oh I never gosh. saw her like it was insane and uh we shot so typically on like on a Hallmark movie you would shoot 15 16 days that's a two hour format and right. you would shoot mm, seven to eight pages a day maybe and we were shooting 12 oh my gosh 13 pages a day gee yeah it was nuts and yeah. and that's still like our our movies this last one that we did same thing like we we lost a day um because of me because i was flying back to toronto to shoot the boys but um uh, oh, we lost a day big time over there <laughs> hour. um but but we lost a shoot day and we were sh- we were shooting 11 12 pages a day great day. and it's exhausting and yeah. the crew my god our crews are incredible because they are you know they're just they're there longer most of the time because they're there from the start and you know actors they sometimes you're in only one scene a day or two scenes a day um and so you come but they, anyway everybody who worked on that last one was just exhausted but also the interesting thing about this show that i just kind of thought about is the fact that it is location heavy where yeah. where when calls the heart is all takes place in hope, hope valley. valley yeah this yeah. is you know you know maybe in an episode in 25 percent of it takes place inside the post office the rest of it yeah elsewhere about different locations throughout like that's a lot too like that that's not nothing well and so to save money <laughs> Um, budget wise, we didn't, a lot of what we shot was not in Vancouver. It was in the environs. So at one point our DLO set was in mission BC, which was almost a three hour drive outside of Vancouver. Good gracious. Wow. So we would be driving like our day was a lot, <laughs> like maybe it wasn't three hours, maybe it was two hours. Cause that seems crazy. Um, but it was a lot of driving. So you yeah. get up at like, you know, three in the morning, get in the car at four and, and, and the crew too. The, and at least as an actor, you know, we had drivers driving us, um, Good. but the crew didn't. Man. So the crew's driving those hours and working 16 hour days. It was yeah. insane. That's that, that's wild. And I, I will say this, like, you know, the thing that we always hear and the postables are after me on Twitter in the kindest way possible. Like they just are just effervescent. Even when I don't like things, they're like, it's okay, Dan. Um, <laughs> There's such better, fa- There's such such better, better fans, fans than, than anyone, but it, particularly when calls the heart. Cause we do that show too. And those, that's yeah. a different, 
breed. Anyway, um, <laughs> they the thing that always the two things that are continually resonant with with the postables are Martha Williamson's writing and then the characters. The you know we mm -hmm. love Kristen, we love Eric, but these characters are just better than anything else in Hallmark. And and I got to yeah. be honest, as someone who thought there was a lot of potential in the movie, it kind of been mad on the TV show. There is no denying that the characters have roots. Do you know what I mean? Like they feel like they're just lived in. They're the and, most fleshed yeah. out I've and, ever seen on Hallmark. And I just have to ask, and you can like, I know some of that is good acting. And I think you and Eric particularly right now are just so, so good. But how much of that is given to you? Like how much, because in Hallmark TV shows and movies, like even shoot even like something like csi or, or something on broadcast network we'll talk to actors who would be like well my character was written like this and then they decided to change it to something completely different it seems like these characters were written before the dawn of time like they they they're just etched in stone tablets and, and they just you just is that is that you and eric and the and the gang just taking it to another level or is this martha williamson creating something that you'll never see on the page but you'll see it in your performance I think I, I have to say, I think it's a co combination, but I will say it starts on the page 100%. And that goes for any job, any show, anything. Like if, if it's not there on the page, it's really, really challenging as an actor to create it out of, you know, nothing because the, the writing is the backbone. The writing is the skeleton and everything else that gets put on that. If the skeleton's not there and it's not strong or the, whatever that, whatever analogy you want to use foundation of a house, it's all going to crumble. Eventually it's mm -hmm. not going to work. And, um, uh, Martha's ability to, um, create characters with such depth, uh, is, is I think really truly in television anyway, unparalleled. Like, she just is so good at creating this well of not just a not just um history and backstory but also the way that the characters interact with one another and how they um push each other to realize things that they otherwise wouldn't see about themselves and um, I just think that the way that these four characters have become um, a, a, a family of sorts interwoven and they all are so different and they all bring their own strengths and weaknesses and they each hold each other up. I don't, I don't know that there's a ensemble like that really. Not and I homework. say that's certain. No, definitely not a homework. Um, I, I, I would say it certainly starts with Martha and then I think, the casting, you know, often people have said about the show that it's like, you know, the show's lightning in a bottle. And I do think that Martha's choices in casting were, were impeccable. I think everyone was, you know, chosen. Um, re she was very particular about her casting and I think she, she nailed it. You know, it's funny. I've told this story before, but Crystal is, is an in interesting Crystal Lowe who plays Rita who's become like my best friend in the entire world. Um, I didn't know her prior to uh, Sign Sealed Delivered. And the first day I met her was at our table read of the pilot. Wow. And uh, when I got the script, I read it. And, and Rita was described very differently than um, <laughs> the way Crystal looks, especially the way Crystal looks in her own sort of <laughs> Crystal wardrobe as opposed to Rita. So she walked into the table read. I knew the director. I'd worked with him before and he was sitting next to me and she walked in and she literally looked like she just walked out of like a, a you know, a hit, a Timote hair commercial or something like <laughs> she had this long, dark hair and it was all blown out and gorgeous. And she was wearing these tight skinny jeans and like fry boots and a leather jacket, and tight t-shirt. She's too pretty. And she, she just, yeah, she is. She just walked in like, you know, like she may as well have had like the hair dryer or the leaf blower. <laughs> um, and I looked up and I, I went literally my jaw was on the table and I turned to the director and I went, what is going on? <laughs> and he goes, mm. and I mean, 
And I told her this story, like, and she looked at me and she was like, I don't know. I don't belong here either. Like in her head. Cause she, before she was cast as Rita, she was always playing these scream Queens and, and, you know, bathing suit models. And she had never played any one like Rita, Wow! but Martha, Martha was looking for something very specific and she, she, she saw it and, and Crystal brought it. And so I do think that, um, a combination of her writing and her choices in casting are what make, well, make the characters so strong. It, it does seem, you know, every now and then you'll watch a show and you'll be like, I bet these, these people legitimately love each other in real life. And like, you don't, you don't always feel that way watching TV. You feel like, Oh, these are professionals doing a job. But this feels like you guys love each other, and I and that that does go a long way. Like it goes a long way. Yeah. But so it's I, I do chemistry, to, right? Yeah, for sure. But I have to ask. There's this huge gap where, like, you guys were making movies regularly, and then you stop for three, four years. Like, what's the group chat there like? Is it like? <laughs> is this? I mean, it's, is this done? I would say it's it's uh, that group chat is when the heck are we gonna do another one? <laughs> um, well, we were we we were told that when we wrapped uh, to the altar, no, yeah, to the altar. When we wrapped that, we were told we were done. Oh wow! Like we were like, this is it. And they they sold like they sold off the sets or did whatever with them, recycled them. Um, we all took our wardrobe. Um, oh well, it so it was done. like a formal goodbye. You guys all did a yeah. like a wrap party and everything. Yep, we were done. So, was, um, what was the reasoning for that? I, well, I think the network had had decided that it was it was time, like it would, you know, reached its whatever. And I mean, I, you know, Science Field is interesting as far as you know numbers go. Like, you know, the the, the bottom line is the business, right? Yes, this, of this course, the business. And so, you know, they got to sell, as Eric would say, got to sell soap. So, um, if if something isn't making as much money or it isn't doing as well as you know X Y Z, then you're going to be like, okay, well, what has to go? I'm gonna we're gonna pull this. And I think you know, Sign Sealed was doing well, but not well enough. And it is like as we said, a very expensive show. So um, I think they were like, okay, we're good. We're we've we've done what we we're gonna do. And then miraculously. Our numbers, like our fans, grew, and yeah. because they would re-air these movies and yeah. sh- and the show, and and our fans just keep our base just kept growing and growing and growing, and people were like, "What? Where is where is the show gone? Like, we want more." Um, and I don't, we wouldn't have done um, the vows we have made if it weren't for the fans. Like, the wow. fans have been incredible, and they fought tooth and nail to have our show again. And so we got a we we also we did get a call from the producer at one point saying, you know, would you guys be willing to come back and, and take a pay cut? <laughs> <laughs> There's that. And we're all like, we're like, you know, yes, we, we, we love, we love doing these. So, so that was, uh, and that was like summer of 2018. And then it was like, okay, well we got to write the script. And, uh, I don't remember what happened, but it was, something was going on and it wasn't, wasn't getting, like, I think Martha had something, another commitment and then pandemic happened Yeah, because we were supposed to shoot in, in, uh, um, we're supposed to shoot in two nineteen Christmas, wow. just okay. before Christmas. And that got pushed for, um, conflicts of scheduling. And then, so they pushed it and they were like, okay, we're going to go in May of 2020. Well, we all know what happened then. Yep. Then it was like, okay, summer of 2020. No nope, pandemic is still, you know, not where we can do this. Um, and so it just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And then finally we were able to make it happen. Yeah. When there was a shakeup at the network, was there any that was concern question, yeah. that it would get just, uh, you know, thrown, shelved? Yeah, shelved. Or was it already, we have it, the contract's done, we did it, we're, happen, we're doing no, it? No, no, we, there was definitely worry or concern that it was going to get shelved. And, 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 you know, not, not, not just because we were paranoid, but because there was actual, you know, we didn't know. They, were, they didn't know. Are, there, are you going to do any more? There so many or is... changes going, we have no idea. Okay, okay. I would love, to, I would love to say yay or nay one way or the other, but I honestly have no, no clue. Well, what's, I think that's the thing that I found interesting was I was like, you know, 
the new the new hallmark has done a lot to separate themselves from some of the old staples of hallmark and then they they revive the appearance for me was they revived signs still delivered which sure. hearing this story they did not do that what happened was is the fans got upset and and the old regime signed this in and then the new group put it on um so that's that's more in line with kind of what we've seen and heard that's why i was curious if you were making more i'm sure the fans you know will have a say in that if they keep growing as well so let's hope has so. sign sealed streamed anywhere other than hallmark app yes i believe it's on amazon prime okay i know that what like they put uh when calls the heart the first few seasons were on netflix for a while and that did like a oh, lot that, for, that that was huge for them yeah 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 for sure um what is your Give me both. I want your favorite, either your favorite uh, of the Sign Sealed movies or the one you're most proud of. Either way, I know it's like choosing between children, but you know, just. Get <laughs> but we all choose could, our children. <laughs> if we could get past that and give me an actual answer, Kristen, you said you wanted to kill your kids, so maybe like better than that. Um, and, and then, and then, uh, and then also same for the uh, episode of TV. So like, pick an episode and then pick a movie, or if you just feel like one is just very strong over the rest, then just do that for me. I would I would say okay so I would say that the last one we did and this is no not a lie like every time we do one we're like oh this is the best one <laughs> and 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 it's true like really I I think based of, like when you talk about the strength of the story um both with the, our core group our postables and then the B story um I and then just this sort of epic sort of finish of the last one walking into the sort of light down that street and the the lines we are forever like i don't know i every time i hear that line and watch that last scene i like get goosebumps i think it just was so this i loved the humor in this last one the blend of um of the the emotional um turmoil and the story with Shane's mom and how she sort of like helps to heal all of her. Anyway, long story short, I think that the last one, although I will say <laughs> that um, from Paris with love has such a, I have such a soft spot for that one. I have no idea why. I just think it's so, I had so much fun shooting that the storyline in that one for Shane was wrought with so much emotion and 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 struggle inner inner struggle and and there's just some beautiful beautiful writing and scenes and um so that and then i would say that my favorite episode of the um episodes one of my episodes yeah. uh yeah yeah it's hard to just say get it gets confusing that's so that's the movie and then the episode one um I have to say, I had I, the one that Carol Burnett guest starred in because it's Carol Burnett. I mean, come right. on, yeah, come on, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I was, yeah. I, I actually was commenting that what's cool about this fan base is, is they know every episode title, so there's like twenty some total they, movies and they shows. They know them better than and, I do, and so it's this great thing where it's this, it's this longhand shorthand, right? It's like we know every title. We're not going to sit here and go, it's a, like they say the whole title. These are the two that are the best. And they all have different ones, and that's I just think that's fantastic for sure. Yeah. Um, Carol, when Carol came on to set, I was so starstruck. I, and I like I rarely get starstruck. Um, but Carol, like as I said in the beginning of our interview, my first professional professional job was the musical Annie. And Carol was Miss Hannigan oh, in wow. the movie of yeah. Annie. Um, if you haven't seen it, you have to watch it just for her performance. I mean, it is Emmy worthy. She is just brilliant. Um, and so I, I must have watched the movie of Annie. Oh God, at least 85 times. Wow. Growing up. Like at least I watched it every sick day. Uh, like, like I watched it constantly. I, so I, and I used to sing little girls, this song that, <laughs> <laughs> Carol does in the movie and so when she was coming on set I was just like I was literally like shaking I was like Miss Hannigan is coming Miss Hannigan is coming <laughs> and um, 
And there was a moment where they had her chair with her name, Carol Burnett. And I like got someone to take a picture of, of me beside it. And I'm like, eh, like <laughs> total geek. And then God bless her. She saw this happening. And then she went beside my chair that said Kristen Booth and went beside it. And went like, this. That's the best. I mean, come on, man. That's so great. She just, she was so great and so bloody funny and and what comedic timing like there isn't anyone better than carol burnett like, one of a kind oh one so of a kind brilliant yeah yeah so yeah that that having her come on set was truly a once in a lifetime you know experience no kidding mm. she's the best um, um i got a quick one real quick so after to the altar you did a tv movie about a cult you did something called abduct, <laughs> abducted on the air. Were you just ready to yeah. do something freaking weird? <laughs> like, like after being in the post office for that many years, we're like, let's just get wild. Let's get wild. <laughs> Cult. Let's do it. You know, it's, it, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yes, I, I, I definitely was after, after doing sign seal for so long there, I was as an actor craving sort of something a little darker, yeah. um, perhaps a little edgier. Um, but no, you know, it's weird. Like as an actor, uh, I'm not at the sort of Nicole Kidman level where people just throw <laughs> offers at me all sure. the time. And I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to pick and choose whatever the, you know, I want. No, like these are jobs that, um, came up, I auditioned for and booked and was like, yes, hell yes. yes sign pay me the up. bills. Yeah, for sure. So, so, you know, I don't know if it's like me, like just sort of like manifesting that I want to do something weird and, and uh, dark and it comes, but well, it's just a, na uh, it's yeah. a natural segue. You go yeah. science of deliver straight into sex cult. And it's and like, yeah. that's just well, exactly where you expect to and go. And now you're on a new uh, G rated family comedy <laughs> called the boys on <laughs> prime. Uh, that's yeah, coming out prime, yeah. in 2022. It was, it's Get one your of your kids. Yeah. Do not let your kids watch this program. Everyone, you don't do it. But, uh, I, season two is, my favorite season of television in the year that it came out, uh, which all time runs together now. I think it was 2020, but I could be 2021. I'm not sure. Um, it was wonderful. It's very, very dark. Uh, it's it's uh, got a lot of satire in it. Um, just tell us about getting. That's a big. I mean, like you know, you're in you're in almost a whole season. We don't know a lot about what's going on with your character, but tell us about how exciting that is because that is very not sign sealed delivered at all. Okay, so so. Just between you and I. I like it. Yep. I'm actually not in all episodes. <laughs> they, oh, <laughs> is, did, did they do that? It so... says it on IMDb. I don't know why. <laughs> I love that it says that on IMDb. <laughs> but I have to be honest and say I'm only in three episodes. Okay. okay. So, I, so, you know, I'm a recurring. Very memorable character, though. So that's exciting. Love it. Um, and uh, what's what's kind of most exciting aside from playing a superhero uh, about this part on the boys is um, there is a famous uh, edition of the, the graphic novel and it's called hero gasm. Yep. And uh, in season three, hero gasm is episode number six. And that is, um, that is my big episode. Oh, great. And um, that is, probably going to go down in history as the most epic episode of television ever made wow um, wow don't sell it stop I, selling <laughs> no no seriously i uh i still sometimes i'm like did that happen <laughs> <laughs> because it is literally a superheroes orgy all right Wow. <laughs> we have all been there. Do you ever, let me ask right? you this, not just from a content mm -hmm. perspective, because clearly those words you just said would have just gotten you kicked out of the dead letter unit in a heartbeat. <laughs> but, but, but the boys, you know, it is very dark, very graphic uh, uh, across the board, TVMA for sure. But it's also very high art television. But do you ever sit like you're making a movie for sign signs of delivered? You know, most homework movies are, t t you know, two million bucks and 15 days. Do you ever look at what they're dealing with at the like, were you on set just going, oh, my gosh, this is a massive production by comparison? Or does it look like it's got to look crazy by comparison, right? Insane. 
Yeah. Insane. So I, I can tell you a couple things. So, so one, one, by the way, I'm wearing jogging pants. I was like, I'm going to put a nice shirt on, but I'm going to keep my <laughs> jogging pants on. Um, and they have holes in them, but anyway, uh, so, um, okay. So I had over 15 or 16 wardrobe fittings. Oh my gosh. This job, this role. I went into set on two days, two separate days, just to do body scans. Oh my gosh. For the special effects. So I, I'd never done this before. I'd yeah. never done a body scan. I'm like, I get the, the call, like, you know, okay, so you're going in on this date and it's a body scan, whatever. And, uh, okay. Body scan. I don't know what that means. And I show up and get in full hair and makeup, the whole deal, wardrobe, everything ready, go to set. And it's a totally separate set. It's not where they're shooting the current call sheet. Um, and it is this weird ass, like almost, it looks like out of a sci-fi movie. It's this massive round cage, basically Okay. that you have to go step into and they close you in it. And when you look around, you realize it's all lit up and you realize that it's, it was like something like 550 cameras. And you're like, man, I'm back in the sex cult all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not your grandma's so carousel. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. So there you go. So I'm standing this thing and they're like, yeah, okay. So stand this way. Now stand this way. Now stand, you know, put like, and, and so they were taking literal 360 photos of over 500 cameras so that they can create the VFX. Wow. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And you're, and, and at the end of the day, you, that made, machine costs more than an entire Hallmark movie. Yes. Yo, easily. Oh, of course it does. It, that machine <laughs> probably costs as much as all the signs he delivers <laughs> combined. That, I mean, yeah. but you're sitting there and they make what eight episodes in a season every two years. And like one, yeah. you know, you're in three episodes. I mean, you knock that out in like, you know, February for sign seal delivered. Like that's nothing. And, and like th that is, they are pouring money and just to make it look exactly the way it should look. I just can't imagine the difference in the, is that the most you feel like they've ever spent on a set that you've been on? I would assume it is right. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean like oh, that, no question. It's more than most movies, like most feature yeah. films. I mean, they are spending yeah. some serious money on that show. Cause you hear like the production and everything takes forever because of that on, on that yeah. program. But that had to be wild just to get used to just the difference between the two. Oh in, yeah. It's, it's crazy. The difference is crazy. Um, and sometimes I would just sit there and just be like, Am I actually here? <laughs> we we shot uh we shot some pretty crazy this is in a different episode, but we shot some pretty crazy stuff for a flashback. And um they were blowing up Jeeps and Good gosh. you know, the gun the gunfire is insane. Um it, yeah. It's, I can't it's wait. Pretty, I can't wait. It's pretty epic. Yeah. So superhero orgy. <laughs> yes. Like, what are the rules here? Like, I've never thought about, like, the logistics behind superheroes knocking boots. <laughs> but there's, there's got <laughs> logistic, like, like, you know, God forbid you have super strength. Like, <laughs> well, I want to be very clear. <laughs> you've not, you've not seen the show. No this idea. This is not the first. Episode six in season three will not be the first time superheroes have sex on the show. They've no. already gone through some of those basics. Oh, brand. good. good. Um, well, listen, so as long as I get a full, you have would have probably been answered by watching great. the first two seasons. Okay, great. As long as I get some sort of you know lesson on how things work. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's all that I'm looking for. That's all. I'm Do you want to tell Bran how? Um, what was it? Pop claw killed someone I'll, or no we Should can do I? that we no. i would love to hear your after. take or i could do it after the show is over <laughs> you do it after the, the show. i will say this the opening scene of the boys uh is one of the most like shockingly bloody uh like kills that you'll like it is very just like it makes you it takes your breath away 
because you yeah. don't know going in that it's going to be that kind of show. I think mm -hmm. you think superheroes, but the superheroes are the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're the and ones I, that yeah. have kind of they they have governmental policy like at their back, and they're like you know creating a world for them and the elite, which is it's it's a great like it's super smart and dark and and funny and just a really good show. But it is also like has moments of just like swift, breathless graphic violence where you're just like, oh my, oh my goodness. But yeah. the reason that that works, I'm not a proponent of that, anyone listening at home. I'm not like, yeah, more of that. But the reason it works is because we watch all these Marvel superheroes where buildings blow up all the time, and we just think that that's yeah. bloodless violence. And this show not only shows what happens that power corrupts, but also like there are consequences to actions, which I think mm -hmm. is... It's a wonderful, dark thinking show. And I, I and yeah. then, but also you get to play a superhero on it. There's so just no way that Captain America is not taking deals under the table. I think is what you're getting <laughs> at, right? If Captain America is anything like the lead in this show, just buckle up because he is the lead in this show. The lead of the seven is like Hitler incarnate. Like wow. he is something, man. I'm just telling you man. for sure. I don't want to give any more away. No, uh, sounds you great. know. But also, apparently, there's a superhero orgy coming up in season three. Let's so go. That. <laughs> That's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> oh, Rapid I love fire. it. Rapid fire. We each get to, to wrap things up. We each get to ask you three questions. I know we've been asking you questions, but these are rapid fire questions. Do I get to ask you guys questions? Sure. You can if you want. Absolutely. Oh. We'll do a question. Well, I, just have, I just have one. I want to know the genesis of Toaster Ted. Oh. <laughs> If you need to ask. <laughs> no. To <laughs> Toaster Ted is just in one episode. Just one in one episode. What happens is we record oh, we record we record the whole week on Sunday night. And by the time we get to Friday, signs are delivered. It's like we've been rec we've been at the studio for three and a half, four hours. And so <laughs> it just becomes like a, just a morning zoo radio show. Like it's it just becomes. Yes. And, and so. Got it. And so we just we're it's all the stuff that doesn't ever need to make it. And it's I feel bad because the poor <laughs> the poor postables have to They've deal with waiting. 10 minutes of ridiculousness to get. Maybe to we should record a sign sale delivered first. Next just week. see how it goes. So that was it. But we just assume there's no way you were actually listening. Like that was our. That was our. <laughs> Our thesis is like Listen she to heard the this one. and she was like, "Now I can say I did my good deed for the week and say I listened no, to this one." You know, it was actually it was my husband. <laughs> he was like, "Dude, you need to see this. These guys are reviewing a sign seal delivered, and you have to watch it. It's quite something." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> So you can thank my hubby. We're good. Thank you, hubby. We're good. Thank you, hubby. Thanks, Chris. All right, hubby. we each get to ask you three questions as All quickly right. as possible. Right. If, I mean, if you want to ask another right. one, I don't care. Dan? Um, the best meal in Toronto. Taroni's grilled octopus. Toronto's best meal is Taroni's? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's octopus? Is it a sushi place? Yeah. The only time I've ever had octopus is at a sushi no. place. No, it's not sushi. It's Italian. And it's grilled octopus. Is it yeah, with yeah. some noodles? Interesting. You're in for sure. It's no 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 noodles. Really? It's really yeah. No, it's really wow. Good. This sounds like melts in your mouth. Unbelievable. This sounds awful. Um, <laughs> what's a movie that you loved as a kid that now that you're an adult you're like I know that's not good but I still freaking love this movie. Flash. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. The movie Gordon. Uh, Flash Gordon. Flash, Flash Gordon. Gordon. I got you yeah. for sure. Or, or Clash of the Titans. Oh man, that's a bad movie for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. no, come on, but it's so good. <laughs> it is. I love that movie as yeah. a kid. Good and bad, both. What's your most yeah. memorable movie theater experience? Like going to the movie theater and leaving and going, oh my gosh, going to the theater is the best thing ever. E.T. Yeah. Mm, man, that was the first time I saw E.T. Come on. Fantastic. What do you really think yeah. about keto and paleo and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> What's. What's your real, un real unfiltered opinion? Well, I'm gluten free and dairy free, so there you go. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah. good for you. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> Listen, my wife moved to gluten free because uh, her joints and it's helping her feel a lot better. My wife's dairy free. She's she's allergic to dairy. I, I should just... be dairy free because my life is a freaking mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, help it! I eat all of it. There's no, you know, there's no. I wish I could. Uh, or you? Do you have celiacs? Do you have like like? No, I'm not celiac. But okay. my God, you do not want to be around me <laughs> when I cheat on my dairy free and gluten free. Well, that's diet. what like my wife. The way she explained it was like, 
it's not like uh, you know, you'll just have a little bit of dairy and that'll be okay. It would be like if you're gonna if you're dairy free and you have a dairy allergen that's not like terminal, it's right. just like a, an allergy. If you're gonna have a piece of cheese, you may as well eat a pizza. Like it literally is yeah. for that one time that experience, it's like putting dirt in water. Like the dirt is either in the water or it's not. And so yeah. that's fascinating because my wife will occasionally be like, okay. I've not had a pizza in six months or whatever. Like I'm, this is whatever. So that's a, that's a fascinating way to live. I can't do that, but God bless you uh, for doing it. Nonetheless, uh, <laughs> the most expensive drink you've ever had, whether you purchased it or purchased for you, most expensive beverage you've ever had. I think it was a $25 cocktail in LA. Okay. That's it. Huh? All right. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I'm not much of a partier. Yeah, I hear that. Says says to superhero orgy. Yeah, superhero girl. orgy. That's, right. <laughs> yeah. that's she, just a Tuesday night. The things I learned about Kristen Booth: A, wants to kill her child. Yeah. Uh, B, B, <laughs> not much of a partier. <laughs> I feel terrible now. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> C. I've been yeah. homeschooling her for a long time. No, oh, I am sure your daughter is I wonderful. Love her a lot. Yes. What's her name so we can set the record straight? Finley. Finley. Finley, Finley you're wonderful. Finley, you little monster. You're a treasure, and your mom <laughs> loves you so very much. That's right. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, <laughs> last, last question is this. As a Canadian, what's something, but you spend some time in America, what's something that you uh, can't get in Canada that you wish, that you like loved about America, and then vice versa, when you're in America, what's something that you like are craving from Canada? Well, when I'm in America, I can't get ketchup chips. Oh, ketchup chips are the, the jam. I'm just telling you right they're now. They're so good. I've never had them. I oh always hear gosh. about them. You can find them here, but they're very difficult to find. Like, they're in, like, bargains. I'm mailing you some. You DM me your address. I'm mailing you some Kristen, ketchup chips. Kristen Booth, we will hold you to it. I'm saying it right uh, now. Dude, it's done. I'm, ha it's I'm so excited. Uh, so and we'll good. do it. We'll do it on a signed, sealed, delivered episode. We'll eat them. We'll eat them. I love it. All right. Okay, great. Okay. I love it. And then, as far as, like, what I can't get in Canada, like, almost everything. <laughs> Let, no, seriously. Like I, there's so many. I would say mostly cosmetics. There's so many uh, different like makeup brands that I love that I can't get huh. here, and it's really frustrating. Interesting. Is it because Unless Americans are just like pay, more like, more vain than Canadians? Like, <laughs> you can't, Canadians are just like whatever. I I don't know what it is. It's just like you have to. You can uh, Yeah. It's just I I have to wow. order them, and then they take like a month to three months to get here and then when they do there's like ninety dollars of duty and it's just yeah mm. it's very frustrating the worst yeah, i hate that for you I hate that i hate mm -hmm. that for you we did it we did Thank it you. this was so much fun so it. much fun gosh you're the best thank you so much for coming you you got to come back when we do maybe from paris with love or something and just join oh, us and, oh i would and love to that would be yeah, fantastic i think that'd great. be a ton of fun you just thanks so much for giving of your time we really do appreciate it thank you and, and may, don't forget to DM me an address to oh, send those ketchup chips. We'll chip. do it. Done and done. And yeah. may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, thanks so much for your support.